Okay, <clears throat> so continuing uh, with genetics and inheritance, we're going to talk about non-Mendelian inheritance. Polygenic inheritance is the most straightforward one. So the expression of the phenotype isn't straightforward, that it takes multiple genes to do it. And when you see this, these are the traits that have a continuous variation. So, for example, height. There's no one gene that contributes to height. It's polygenic. And that's why you don't have people either like five foot or six foot. That would be Mendelian. The fact that you have people at every increment between and outlying that is makes it the polygenic. Uh, so if you look at it like this, here's a distribution of people by height. And the, uh, so it proves that it is polygenic. Idealized, you want a bell curve. So it, it's like marks. There are many attributes that, that give, give you your marks. It's, it's this continuous sort of thing. And it would be a bell. The actual, in this particular photo, is this, uh, but it's approaching that bell curve. The bigger the sample size, the closer to the bell curve that you actually get. So things like height, weight, skin color is actually uh, polygenic. There's more than one gene that contributes to skin color. <clears throat> the inheritability part of intelligence is the same sort of thing. And multiple disorders follow these distributions as well. So, uh, multiple genes involved with, with polygenic. Here's another one, incomplete dominance. So, this is when the allele's dominance isn't a complete dominance, and the phenotype that's intermediate. So, for instance, there are certain flowers where red and white are incomplete dominant. So, unlike peas where the purple and white are complete dominant and recessive things like roses for instance red and white if they mix so the heterozygous individuals well their phenotype will be pink the homozygous red the heterozygous uh, white snapdragons fall into this category that's why we have so many colors of snapdragons. So you get the red snapdragon, the white snapdragon, F1 generation, everybody's pink. You get the pinks and you end up with one red, two pinks, and a, and a white. It still follows this pundit square, but the genotype is more reflective and more reflected in the phenotype, that the heterozygous look different than the homozygous dominant or the homozygous recessive. So this is incomplete dominance. As opposed to codominance. So both alleles can be expressed um, under codominance. So you don't get an intermediate, you get something else that's brand new phenotype. And an example of this would be um, blood typing. So if you have the genes that, that, that make you type A, you will be type A. If you have the genes that are type B, you will be type B. If you have neither of them, you are type O. So if you have A and an A, you will be A. If you have B and a B, you will be B. If you have an A and an O, you will be A. If you have a B and an O, you will be B. If you have an O and an O, you are type O. But if you have an A and a B, you're type AB. 
So, so A and B are dominant over the type O variant, but they're co-dominant to each other. So, so here's the, the genotype. A, 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 I, or so I, capital A, so I, small I, type A. I, B, I, B, B, I, B, and I is B. I, A, I, B, A, B, I, I, O. So this again is doing the square. And you can see that there's three different possible gametes from one parent and from the other. So if, so if in this case, this is what you would, you would end up with. There's other things. There's, there's something called epistasis. So epistasis refers to when one being, gene being dependent on the presence of another one to modify. So the epistatic mutations have different effects in combination than each gene individually. Um, this is more common than we first thought. Even things that look Mendelian kind of end up being epistatic. So here's an example. Black Labradors, Chocolate Labs, and Yellow Labs. So if you take a Black Lab and cross with a Yellow Lab, you're going to get a whole bunch of F1 Black Puppies. If you breed these F1 generation puppies, you're going to get black, you're going to get four yellows, but you're going to get three chocolates. And that's because missing the epistasis, you'll see the chocolates are all these small bees. Um, and because this is an epistatic thing, that you need to have the dominant B for yellow or black. There are environmental factors which, which change which alleles are expressed. So there's a lot of animals, especially in the Arctic, that have white fur in the cold and have brown fur in the warm. They're heat sensitive. Um, the hydrangea flowers will be blue flowers in acidic soil, pink flowers in alkaline soil. So if you have a hydrangea in your front garden and you uh, want it to be blue, you put acid in the soil. You, you, know, you can put a soil additive that will acidify it and make the flowers come up blue. Um, so ermine and various other animals have these, these pigments changes. So there's the same fox here and here, same hydrangea there and there. A lot of genetics is done with fruit flies, and that's because their karyotype is four. They have two pairs of genes, and so the mathematics is really easy to work out. Um, so, and one pair of the genes is the sex chromosome. So you can have the males, and so like white-eyed and, and red-eyed ones, um, but it's mostly in the males. So that means that it must be on the on the sex chromosome. So so males have an X and Y chromosome, the same as in people. So if there's two X chromosomes, it's 
female, X and Y is male. So the presence of the white eye trait being in males must mean that the white eye allele is only on the X chromosome and it is and it is a recessive. So a female with two X chromosomes will be red eyed most of the time because one of the, their chromosomes will likely have a red. The only time a female can have red is by having two white-eyed X's. And that's very difficult. If, what, if, if the father was red or white-eyed and the mother was red-eyed, then you're still going to have an F1 red. So you, you have to be, the mother has to be a carrier and the father uh, white-eyed for that to happen, uh, much less likely. So if you look at it, so the female is this, the male is this, and we end up with this, the X-linked inheritance. So these two are males because they got the Y from this male. These two are females because they got the X from the father. All four of them got an X, one of the two X's from the mother. We see X-linked things in color blindness, hemophilia, muscular dystrophy. Uh, and these diseases happen in men way more often. Another idea is this idea of linkage that chromosomes, genes that are on the similar parts of the chromosome segregate together. And so you like blonde and hair and blue eyes tend to segregate together because the genes are linked on the same chromosome. The closer the, the two genes are to each other on the chromosome, the less likely they will cross over and separate. Like, so if we look at it, so chromosome A or gene A, gene B, and gene C are on these two. And if they cross, A and B will go across, but C will separate from them. So that's the only way that this separation can happen. Um, so the matched chromosomes are called autosomes, and then we have an X and a Y chromosome, the sex chromosomes in humans. XX is female, XY is male. Autosome, so my son has an autosomal recessive kidney disease, which means both alleles are the recessive gene for this kidney disease. The Y chromosome determines male characteristics. So sometimes during meiosis, the chromosomes don't separate together. They don't separate properly. And this leads to abnormal chromosome numbers. So for instance, if chromosome 21, if one egg cell gets both copies of chromosome 21 and the sperm adds another copy of 21, then the, um, now the new person has three copies of, of 21. They have 47 chromosomes instead of 46. And this leads to Down syndrome. Now sometimes these aneuploidies, these, uh, these abnormal numbers uh, are very compatible with life, like for instance Down syndrome. Sometimes they're not compatible at all and these, these fetuses don't develop. So this is the non-disjunction happens here and so that we end up with the extra chromosome and these ones are missing the chromosome in the gametes. These ones are likely to not be viable to produce viable offspring. These ones can or can't. In the, um, 
in the sex chromosomes, the same thing can happen. And they mostly are compatible with life. So we actually see these. So sometimes there's two X's from mom and an X from the father. We call this trisomy X. The, pe the people that have this are female, they're tall, they tend to have learning disabilities and they tend to not be fertile. The other side of this is the mother doesn't produce. So the other gamete from this, if one gets two X's in the egg, the other egg that could be produced gets no X's. So an X comes from the father and you have X and nothing. Turner syndrome, which is female, short stature, uh, kind of continuous adolescence. Kleinfelters is XXY, so the same thing happens except dad gives the Y. So you get male phenotypes, uh, small gonads, oftentimes vest, breast development, etc. XYY is phenotype is normal male, but there tends to be aggression more. You know, this XYY there is a there's a greater percentage in incarcerated individuals than in the general population for some reason. So that's called non-disjunction. Mutations uh, that, that happen in the germ cells, in the cells that give rise to the gametes, can be passed to future generations. That's why when you go get dental x-rays, they cover your lap with the lead shield because they don't want to cause a mutation in the germ cell. Uh, most mutations are recessive alleles if they uh, don't cause death, um, and they usually are not expressed, but they're heterozygous. But some mutant alleles become common in the in the population, and they, they're called genetic disorders. So um, this is often a problem with inbreeding, because a mutation that happens in an individual can then end up being passed as a recessive trait, but if both cousins are carrying the same recessive trait from the from the same grandfather, they uh, and they have offspring, the recessive trait can become expressed as a phenotype. So here's some examples: sickle cell anemia, autosomal recessive. Um, you end up with that normal blood cells. The interesting thing is that sickle cell anemia gives some sort of protection against uh, malaria. So Tay-Sachs, um, so you get brain deterioration, it's an autosomal recessive. Um, my son has autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease, ARPKD. Um, Cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive. Huntington's chorea uh, is an autosomal dominant. But what's interesting, um, because there's a lot more glutamides, but what's interesting is that these people, the brain deterioration doesn't start until well into their 30s, even though it's dominant. And they've often had their kids already. They don't even know that they have it. Um, there was um, Woody Guthrie, a famous folk singer, had it, and then he gave it to his son Arlo Guthrie, who was also a famous singer. Here's some cystic fibrosis. Hemophilia is a recessive, excellent trait, as is muscular dystrophy. This runs in the royal families of Europe because there was uh, a mutation probably someplace they think it was actually in um, around Queen Victoria's time and because royal families tend to marry e each other that that 
X linked gets expressed. You'll read more about this stuff when you take um, pathology. So in summary, you can have the genotype is the gene, the phenotype is the visible trait. Homozygous alleles the same, heterozygous alleles that are different. Dominant and recessive traits. Punnett squares determined, you can use a test cross to determine the genotype of the parent plant by seeing what how things turn out. Two traits that are linked together can be done in a dye hybrid. Non-Mendelian, we can have polygenic, more than one gene determines a trait, and so that we get a distribution. Incomplete, there's an intermediate, so these are the pink flowers. Codominance, both alleles can be expressed like AB blood types. Epistasis is the chocolate labs, so two genes determine the trait, um, and they're different from each one alone. Um, environmental factors change, so pH, temperature, things like that. We can have non-disjunction, so trisomies and etc. cetera. Uh, and we can have genetically inherited diseases, uh, either sex-linked or um, autosomal recessive or autosomal dominant um, will work too.